All right. Hello, everyone. I am Steve at Cyprus. I uh, apologize for starting a couple of minutes late. Uh, we had a couple of technical difficulties, but we are all good now. So uh, why don't I go ahead and start sharing my screen here for the slides, and then we will go ahead and get started. Um, I see that Zoom is showing a lot of people are joining. Uh, so why don't we give people uh, half a minute and then we will get started. Um, in, oh, I see some chats from people. Hello from California. Uh, I think we always get a, a really interesting global audience. So i uh, love to hear where people are from. I'm calling in from Seattle right now. And uh, the Spot at Home folks are over in Europe. Where you, are you guys in Spain, right? Yes, in Madrid. Madrid, excellent. All right. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So thanks everyone for joining today's webcast. Again, apologize for running a couple minutes late, um, but why don't we dive in because there's a lot of great content. So today's webcast is on how uh, Spot Home utilize their test for en test first engineering culture. Uh, utilizing Cypress to improve both their productivity and their QA. Um, so I am joined by the Spot Home team, and I want to welcome everyone to today's webcast. I think um, uh, after today's uh, webcast, this which is being recorded, uh, we will send an email in the next day or two uh, with a recording to the webcast link, um, as well as an opportunity to get a thank you gift, uh, one, of our, one of our magical t-shirts, uh, by filling out a brief survey, which informs us and helps us understand uh, what content you find valuable and how we can improve. Uh, we want to send you one of these awesome t-shirts uh, made of the finest cotton and sporting the, the logo of the best company on the planet. So watch out for that email. And again, this is being recorded and that email will have the link to that webcast. So today's presenters, I am pleased to introduce uh, Boria and David from Spot Home. So Boria is the front end engineer and David Zembrana is, our, is a QA autom automation engineer. Uh, I'm Steve Yee, VP of Marketing at Cyprus. So um, we get a, we always get a lot of great questions from people. Uh, and so to make sure that we're getting uh, and able to answer your questions uh, during the webcast, and if we run out of time, we'll make sure to follow up with you. Uh, we're utilizing a tool and a service called Slido. So if you were on last week's webcast, um, uh, Slido is actually another Cypress, uh, Cypress user, and we'll have that video available for, for you as well on demand if you check out the Cypress blog, and we'll have a case study within the next couple of weeks as well. So to join the Q&A, uh, visit slido.com, and you'll see highlighted in yellow on the screen, uh, there's a field for entering a code. So enter the code Spot Home, and that'll take you to the QA screen. So, uh, so go there for your questions and to make sure that uh, we capture them. So in today's talk uh, by the Spot Home team, they'll talk a little bit more about what they do. They do, they have got a really cool service that they'll show off, um, and then they'll talk about. Uh, their way that their engineering team is structured, um, the platform that they're utilizing, uh, and how they're delivering the service, and how their engineering team grew and some of the challenges they started facing, and so uh, why they started this journey down into QA, why it's so important to them, and then how they came to the decision process to utilize Cyprus. Uh, so then they'll show kind of like their journey on how they started uh, ramping up their QA maturity and engineering excellence utilizing Cyprus uh, and some of the key results that they've achieved through the through utilizing it uh, and adopting a, a test first uh, driven mentality. And then they'll also take us through a couple of demos, real world demos of how they're actually utilizing Cyprus and QA uh, to make Spot a Home a great user experience for their customers. So let me get out of the way and introduce uh, and hand it over to the Spot Home team. Okay, so thank you very much, Steve, for the introduction. So yeah, let's uh, start out with uh, what is Spot Home. So Spot Home is basically a platform that connects property owners with people trying to find a new home to rent. So what we provide is a pretty intuitive UI uh, to make the whole process of renting a home uh, that easy. So, oh. I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, as I was saying, um, what we provide is yeah, a website 
to make it pretty easy the whole process of renting a, a new home. So to start with, you can select uh, one of the series that we are uh, available and then check in and check out date. And then you just uh, need to explore all the options that we offer. So also to remark that for now, we are presenting just in several major cities in, in Europe. So of course there are plans to, to, to expand on that, but for now just in, in some of uh, cities here in, in Europe. So what we actually aim to do here is like to make the whole process of renting a new home completely uh, digitalized and online. So removing all that need to um, visit the property by yourself so that uh, we already provide all that information that you might need in order to rent your home. So as you can see there, uh, we offer also the, you can see the properties in the map and you have also the agree to, to check the, the properties. And we also offer lots of possibilities with filters. So you can select by a kind of property, what kind of property you, you want to, to live in. And you can also filter by neighborhood and lots of features there. So in the end, um, this is about making the, the whole process more, more accurate and, and quickly for our users. So actually, uh, how do we achieve all that? Like having all this information online already available for our users. So we, we make it, we achieve it by the figure of the home checkers. So these figures, these guys basically are uh, some people that already go visit the property uh, in a previous stage and they, when well, they interview the landlords, they get as much information as possible from the properties. And they also upload uh, high quality pictures, videos. There are also video tools and floor plans so that all the information is uh, property, proper, uh, properly listed already there. And our uh, customers have already all that information in order to to make the, the decision, uh, the best possible decision that uh, they, they can do, right? So uh, this is, well, how the, the summary of the property looks like. So from that point on, when the user already has selected the, the property, uh, we also offer a checkout process where, where users can register and leave some data also from the landlord and for us in order to have all the, all the data which is possible to make uh, this whole process. And then there is a payment gateway just to, uh, for them to enable the, the payment and be, uh, make it possible to, to create the, the booking request. So besides um, this uh, web application, we also offer the kind of the other side of the business, which is an application for our landlords to make uh, possible for them to also update their properties. So if they need to update the pricing or any kind of feature or availability, we also offer that part to, to our landlords so that all the listings are um, updated and all the information there is uh, properly updated. Okay, so can we move on please, Steve? Okay, thank you. So moving on to the, to the team, uh, so let's talk a little bit about the engineering team. So right now, we are over 60 engineers here. Uh, this accounts only for the engineering team. If we take also in account our product team, that the uh, number goes further, of course. And we can, well, actually, uh, most of us are based here in Madrid, but we have recently opened a new office in London as well. So um, there is people working from there as well, and the team is actually growing in, in both offices. Uh, which is a pretty good uh, sign. And for the engineering team, we can say that uh, we are kind of splitting two different kind of uh, teams here. So we have on one side the product teams, uh, which are basically uh, well uh, squads completely dedicated to uh, one part of our application. And then we also have the horizontal teams, uh, which are teams that uh, yeah provide all the support that the product teams uh, might need. So going back to the first ones, uh, as I said, they are uh, completely autonomous uh, teams, uh, fully focused on one part of our uh, funnel or our application. So having that in mind, uh, you might expect that uh, you need uh, quite different uh, profiles in each of these teams. 
which are listed there. So these are uh, pretty rough numbers, but uh, more or less this is the average that uh, we find here. So a typical team would have from three to five developers, and that accounts uh, for front-end and back-end developers as well. And there is always one QA automation engineer in each of the teams. Um, these guys take uh, care of um, the, well, the UI test automation and also the API level test automation. So taking care of uh, these uh, both sides. Um, there's also always one tech lead per team and then uh, more figures from product, such as uh, product managers and yeah, people from user experience and designers as, as well. So all these people working together uh, towards one aspect of our application. And then we have uh, as well these horizontal teams providing help to the uh, different product teams. So these are basically two teams. Uh, one is the platform team from people from DevOps and front-end core, and also one people dedicated to all the data and the business intelligence that uh, we have here. And actually pretty important because we based our, um, actually our feature on our ideas, uh, getting information from, from these teams. So next slide, please. Okay. <coughs> okay, so as David mentioned, uh, we are a lot of teams here, and um, to to make the work for them more easy, more easy, easier, uh, we we are we have adopted the the backend for frontend pattern in, uh, in our frontend projects, which is called BFF, and it offers us a lot of flexibility on splitting the, the whole platform into smaller projects, and being able to to manage them individually. Also, uh, it allows us to, to scale them in case of need. Maybe we have a, a peak of traffic um, in some pages, and we are able to, to scale that BFF up. Uh, at this moment, we have uh, almost 20, 20 BFFs, and the teams are managing more or less two or three of them at the same time, or even working on a lot of them at the same time. And this BFF what are only just uh, Node.js with an express server uh, API uh, endpoint, also a GraphQL endpoint, because we, we rely heavily in, into that technology. And they render different uh, React pages and React components and as, a, as a UI engine. Uh, we use these BFFs as a, an aggregation platform, uh, as a gateway to, to our different PHP microservices we have in the backend. Uh, that are connected to several different uh, several databases, and also, well, as you can see in the image, uh, we have um, the native applications that are consuming also the, the the data from the BFFs, which are they have some special cases in there. But yeah, so this whole thing is uh, entirely deployed in a Kubernetes environment, uh, which allows us which allows us to 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 cover the case exposed before, uh, like. Uh, boosting some BFF because we have a peak of traffic. And to for being able to, to deploy all this stuff in our daily basis, we have built our internal CI tool, uh, which we'll be talking about uh, about it later. And we are using a Brigade JS, which is an event-driven tool uh, made for uh, in JavaScript for Kubernetes. Yeah, that's more or less the the whole vision for the platform. So can we move on, Steve? Okay, thank you. So uh, having the, in mind this, the teams and the, the, the features, uh, the platform we have, uh, we have a lot of uh, challenges. The first one are uh, related with uh, critical paths and need to be, to be tested heavily. Because as mentioned before, uh, different teams are, uh, are working <coughs> different BFFs at the same time with the same with the very same feature, and they need to to, to make it work. Mm -hmm. So we are also working at a very high speed. So manual test regression are not uh, something that we may we can afford at this moment. Even though we have a manual engineer, uh, manual QA engineer, but uh, it's not the the best solution always. Next, please. Okay. So because of this rapid pace of, pace of change, we need to, to, to keep in mind that we will be dealing with a lot of uh, changes at the same time uh, because uh, several factors. 
first is that our engineering team is growing very fast. Uh, as a, an, an anecdote, when I entered here a year and a half ago, we were only five front end engineers, and now we're over 20, so it's growing quite fast. Uh, we also have a like dynamic squad that meet for a, for a, a specific amount of time working in a specific feature across the BFFs. So that introduced some entropy on that. And also all of uh, our features are uh, very, very, are relying very heavily into an AV experiment culture. We need to gather data from everything we, we, wanna, we want to launch in order to keep on iterating and keep on improving. So all this whole picture leads to up to 250 deploys per week using the ROCI tool. And also uh, with, we have to keep in mind that everything should be working as expected. Uh, so we, yeah, we need to keep on maintaining all BFFs. Also, as a side note, we have uh, seven, several scenarios that uh, are like a long-term scheduled task. For example, like when we, we need to send some alerts to our users, they, they are scheduled for, uh, several, for a couple of days to be sent. So yeah, that's another complex thing we have to keep in mind. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's get a little bit more into the topic. So uh, why Cypress? So of course, there, um, there were different uh, aspects and points that uh, we considered. And here we have a summary of the most important ones uh, for us. So first one, uh, it's because it fits nicely in our architecture. So as Borja mentioned, um, all of our frameworks here are based in, in JavaScript, so, uh, from Brigade and also in the BFFs, uh, all the frameworks there are based in JavaScript. So it makes completely sense to also adopt a test framework uh, tool, uh, also based in the same language. And just because uh, it keeps the integration way easier and also it enables more people to, to use it here if we already familiarize with uh, this language. And uh, also about the documentation, uh, so I wanted to mention it here because, well, from our point of view, and I know that I'm not the only one, but the documentation is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty easy to follow and to find the things that you need. And actually, I have seen lots of tweets out there, uh, <laughs> like many people saying that the documentation of Cypress is a really good one because it also has lots of contribution. So this is why, in the end, it's a very nice guide to, to follow. And also the, about the community. So if you have a look at the uh, GitHub repository or even this uh, Gitter chat, and you see that there is lots of people supporting there and, and providing help. Actually, myself, I used to spend a lot of time in that uh, Gitter chat during my first months working with uh, Cypress, just because there I found most of the of the answers that uh, uh, for the questions that, that I had by then. So yeah, lots of people helping. Um, another good, good point, the open source. So here at Scott at Home, we embrace a lot uh, open source tools. And there's actually some people here contributing to, to different uh, libraries. So uh, we have this mindset uh, for adopting and contributing to open source uh, projects. So that's a good point also to remark. And yeah, for the next one, a little bit more technical. So the fact that uh, Cypress runs in the in the browser, so uh, just being able to have your test runner, uh, say like running from the inside instead of having an outsider tool communicating with your application throughout any API or WebSocket. So you when you when you test it, when you run it, you can see the difference in terms of uh, performance and, and efficiency. And also because it enables you to do uh, more things and in a more efficient way. So um, it's something that actually you, you need to, to see uh, to, to perceive that uh, the feeling is way better. And actually when you, when you try it and you see how it works, uh, it's kind of difficult to go back to the previous <laughs> uh, stage. Uh, also, because of the fact that it is uh, pretty easy to debug, so when you open the test runner and you have this uh, live log uh, running on the left side, 
so you get to see everything that uh, Cypress is doing uh, and also uh, saving the snapshots for every step there. So uh, all that makes pretty easy uh, the, all these, um, um, how to say it, yeah, all the activities for debugging your application. So even your application or your test code, uh, it's pretty easy to debug having all these capabilities there. So, and this goes as well with uh, saving time when you develop tests and yeah, uh, in the end, pushing forward in a more uh, quicker way. And yeah, also mentioned to the dashboard. So actually the dashboard is pretty good and as well, it is pretty simple. So, and by simple, I mean that just at first uh, sight, you get lots of, of information and you don't need like too many clicks uh, just to, uh, to find out what you are looking there. So it's pretty easy to follow and you get lots of, of information just from the first screenshot. So that's also a pretty good point there. And yeah, all these points bring me to this last one about the easy onboarding of the developers. So yeah, having in mind that um, it is pretty, pretty easy to work with, also the setup is quite easy and it fa facilitates a lot the, all the debugging tasks. And also that uh, it is a um, JavaScript framework, all that combined um, was like the, the key to enable us to um, extend our testing capabilities to the rest of the team, not just uh, the QA team. So now we find that uh, most of our front-end developers, they already use uh, Cypress. Uh, not that they all of them use it on an everyday basis, but they get to, to see the test collection, they run the test by themselves, and they get to see how it works. And uh, this actually has helped us a lot in, in actually in our uh, testing efforts and the whole QA uh, activities that uh, we do here. So I will um, say more in, I think, in some upcoming slides. So let's move on to the next one, please. Okay, so about the journey, our journey, which I guess it's pretty similar to others out there. So we started with a Selenium test collection here, and here I'm talking about one year and a half ago, more or less. Uh, it was written in Java, which was already a blocker if we want to extend it to, to, to the rest of the team. Just because of the this learning curve, uh, curve uh, it couldn't have been as easy as uh, having moved uh, away with, uh, well, moved on with a JavaScript test framework. So that was already a blocker. Uh, so because of that, only people from QA could help. And by then they were just two guys there. So uh, if we wanted to increase our QA capabilities, we would just need to, to hire more people from QA. So that could have been a possibility that uh, we actually manage it. And yeah, but uh, we, we took like another, uh, another path uh, as I will mention. So for this Selenium test collection, we didn't have actually many scenarios. Um, if I recall well, they were something between 12 and 16, 17 scenarios. So not lots of scenarios, but every scenario was quite long. And I mean, by long, I mean, going from our landing page to the payment and success page. So they did like the whole funnel. So they used to take like lots of time. And also we had some problems with the flakiness there. And just because they were like hitting uh, some different BFFs uh, throughout the whole test, and this made the, in the end, having, well, maintaining this uh, test framework uh, more complicated than with a different focus. Also because of the, this nightly builds that we had, um, we only got to know uh, if something was wrong in the morning, uh, in the day after the, the changes. So, if during the day any people would, I mean, uh, change something in any BFF or in different BFFs, so it was until the next day where we discovered that uh, actually some of the tests were failing and we needed to update them. And from some point in, in time, that started to be like quite painful and time taking. So it was uh, obvious that we needed to change focus, especially from that moment where we started to to release in a much uh, higher pace so we yeah we need to to change the current focus so here cypress comes in and actually this story is a little bit uh, funny because 
Uh, I, I started using Cypress before joining Spot Home and just for two, three months before joining. And actually, when I came here, I mentioned it actually without having any expectation that people would know about it. And just because it was in a pretty beta stage, uh, but they did. And they did because uh, here they already did some kind of proof of, of concept and they liked it. So um, they liked the idea to uh, play around a little bit more with Cypress. So this is uh, how it started. So the first test that we developed here uh, were actually not in our uh, public uh, customer website, but on an in-house tool here for our operations team. And as a kind of second proof of concept. Uh, so we had also these uh, weekly checkpoints where uh, all the QA team we gathered and we discussed uh, how well or how bad uh, we were doing with it. And actually the feedback and all yeah, the comments were, were like quite good. And uh, it started to be kind of obvious that uh, that was the, the path to take. So after some weeks, we decided that uh, we would go all in with Cypress. So we started uh, developing test scenarios for our uh, customer website. So starting with pretty basic scenarios, but then uh, covering the, the whole funnel. And this was made in a different way as uh, we have in Selenius previously, because as I, as I mentioned, we had these long scenarios hitting all the BFFs uh, in just one test. And with Cypress, and yeah, the easy integration that uh, we had with uh, Brigade, we were able to easily, uh, behind goals, uh, set up uh, different, uh, well, set up the end to end tests in different pipelines. So that what we have now are a end to end test collection in each one of these BFFs. So we have them completely isolated from other BFFs. So if we just want to release one of, uh, I mean, to production one of them, uh, we are not worried if another BFF is not working well or whatever. I mean, if this, if that tests already work uh, for the BFF, then it's okay for going to, to production. So we, when we had all that in place, we shut down our Selenium test collection and we uh, fully dedicated our um, UI automation to, to move on with, with Cypress. So yeah, that's for the, for the journey. Uh, can we move on, please? Okay, so going into the results. So the first one, uh, first part uh, about the culture of testing, and this is actually like a pretty key point in this presentation. So being able to extend the testing capabilities to most of part of our team, so not just the QA people, but also front-end developers, uh, that actually helped us a lot, a lot to increase the awareness of uh, the whole testing that was being done here. So uh, now lots of uh, people here are able to run the tests. They get to see what is uh, going on with the end-to-end -end tests, uh, also with the whole quality of the application. Um, they are interested in, in them. They, actually, they also get into the dashboard to see the results and also for, for the guys that actually develop new tests, because it's not just running them and see what's going on, but they also develop new tests that we um, defining in previous step of the uh, life cycle here. So they actually, yeah, they get very interested in, in that part. And in the end, uh, all that has increased a lot our uh, quality awareness in, in our whole team. Uh, so that's for the culture. And then, yeah, I also wanted to mention a little bit about the balance between automated and manual testing that we have here. So on one side, we have uh, increased a lot our end-to-end -end, uh, efforts. Uh, so not just QA, but also front-end developers. So, and it's not like we rely on developers to develop new tests, but uh, it's just up to us and depending on the workforce that we have for the week. So there is an end-to-end -end task and any of the front-end developers or the QA guys uh, can tackle it. And I mean, we also help us together, each other. So uh, it's pretty easy to, to move on uh, with the tasks now. 
And so on one side, we have that. And on the other side, uh, we also have this figure of the functional tester, uh, which we actually didn't have uh, one year ago. So now we have extended a lot our end, our well end-to-end uh, -end, uh, regression test suite. And we also have this other side of the manual tester doing lots of exploratory testing for every new release. So having all that combined, uh, that gives us a pretty like good feeling about the whole quality and actually pretty few bugs made its way to, to production. So I'm not going to say that uh, we have no bugs because, because that would be a lie, but uh, we feel now like pretty much uh, covered than, than before with, with this strategy, like uh, going stronger in, in both sides. So this, uh, yeah, I wanted to, to remark this as well. So about the figures, uh, for now we have more than 160 test scenarios already developed, uh, most of them in our customer page. Uh, about the weekly test runs, uh, the average number goes over 130 runs. Uh, this, well, this number depends a lot on, on the week and how many features we want to release, but more or less these are the numbers that we are seeing in these uh, past weeks. Um, also mentioned that all the test runs, uh, they go under eight, eight minutes, and we achieve that because of the parallelization that uh, Cypress enables. So actually, uh, yeah, thanks to Brevet and, and Cypress, uh, we were able to set up these uh, parallel capabilities uh, pretty easily. And this timing, well, this actually goes hand in hand with one a QA guidelines that we have here, which is like uh, no test collection can make it uh, in more than 10 minutes. So 10 minutes is like our red line. We cannot cross it. So, and actually the longest ones, uh, they, they are around eight minutes and actually most of them, they go between four and five minutes. So in the end is uh, knowing the state of, the, of your application uh, pretty quickly and so that you can react uh, pretty quickly if something goes wrong. So that's about the, the figures. And that brings me to last point here about the saving time. So uh, same thing, the, uh, be able to run them in, in parallel. Uh, that keeps this uh, timing for uh, reacting against any, any problem uh, very, very low. Uh, also, having everything centralized in the dashboard helps us a lot because, uh, as Borja mentioned, we have uh, around 20 BFFs. Uh, they trigger from one to two, three, or four test collections. So, I mean, we can follow the, all the test runs in our CI tool and also in our Slack channels because uh, we have also integrated it there. But having everything centralized there in the dashboard, so getting all the results in, in, one, in one place, that also helps us a lot in terms of uh, velocity because we just uh, need to check one one place to see the, the state of our application and we discover it pretty quickly if we have some any kind of, of issue there so that's that's for the results and impact okay so last part the demo so in in this part we will be showing one of our tests that we have for our checkout funnel. So, well, actually, well, this is like the part of the funnel that uh, where the user already has picked their uh, property. So they have to fill in the form, leave some data, and then go throughout our um, uh, payment, payment channels. And then just checking that uh, the booking request was uh, sent and the test was OK. So uh, something that I wanted to remark in this scenario is how we prepare the scenario just to kind of um, start in, in the BFF that we want to, instead of uh, going to our landing page and doing the, the whole funnel. So in the end, what we do is uh, calling our uh, backend as a way of uh, preparing the data so that it is ready the moment we start with the, with the scenario. So we will be showing the, a little bit the test code then the, how it looks like in the test runner, and also a couple of snapshots regarding how, um, regarding our CI run, I mean, how we see it in our uh, brigade tool, and also uh, one test run in the, in the dashboard as well. So let's move on, please. Okay.
So that's for the test code. So here we have one spec file with just one test and one before hook. So there in the before hook, well, we just uh, do uh, the login for our user. And there, there is a function that it actually does this work that I have uh, talked about for calling our uh, backend APIs. And this is just, uh, as you can read there, cleaning up the, the occupancies for one listing. So in this way, we we know that uh, the listing will be completely available the moment that we want to do any kind of reservation. So this is I'm, I'm pretty basic, but uh, just to wanted to, to show it. So the moment we start with the scenario, uh, the property is already available. So there in the test, OK, there is there are a couple of uh, roads that we set up just to check that uh, this network request take place. Also, there it is a visit to the BFF. Uh, with information from the city, the listing, and we know that it is ready because of the before hook that we ran before. And then, yeah, uh, then it comes the form, so filling up the data, selecting the fields there that we need to, to move on in our uh, funnel. Also, there, uh, there is, yeah, there. Uh, there uh, we wait for one of these network requests to go through, just to check that. Uh, uh, it takes place uh, and then we check that we are in the payment page after filling up the form once there we just uh, fill up the form for the credit card uh, we leave some data there and just submitting all the all the data and checking that the booking request takes place this is the network request and then that we are in the success page so we just check the the, U, the url we don't check anything else we actually can do it as well, but uh, for now, I mean, we are pretty fine just checking the, the URLs and it is it is enough for uh, what we want to, to test. So let's go for the test runner. Next slide, please. Okay. So this is how the test uh, looks like. So as you can see, a couple of uh, calls to the API and then we land into our BFF, we fill up the form with all the data there. Then we move to the payment page. We check that, yeah, we can select the credit card once it's available. And then we fill up the form, we submit the payment, and then that we are in the success page. So this is, I mean, how the test looks like and actually what any of our customers would see if they follow the funnel. And yeah, not many things there. So here uh, it is just covering around the, the test log just to show how the snapshots work. And just in case we need to debug anything, it's pretty easy moving on from there. And you can also deep dive into there with the browser console. So it's uh, quite, quite easy to, to follow. So that's for the, uh, okay, for the test run. Uh, next one, okay, let's run. <coughs> okay, so this is just a snapshot to, to display like a, a quick view of what will, will look, what will look or uh, when everything, when something gets merged to master. So. That this will trigger an event using Brigade. And as you can see, reading from bottom to top, uh, it will this push will be the, the actual commit to, to master. And then uh, if everything goes well, we're running the unit test in that push. Then uh, when the BFF will be deployed into our staging environment. And as you can see, the post deploy hook is using the, the Brigade, another Brigade event to launch all these end-to-end -end tests as you can see going to the top like the end to end for the search for the chat for the customer login also some other tests we have and this is quite uh, useful because in, in just one glance we can see that uh, we have a directly into the to the dashboard to see the video of the of the end to end and also we have uh, another link to, to to display the logs that occurred during this end to end so this is more or less what this looks like. Uh, just as a quick note, uh, is this tool started as a side project here at Spot Home, and uh, by as a side project for a 
some junior engineers that started with us a year and a half ago. And it evolved into our current uh, CI tool, which is quite, quite powerful and quite powerful. Very yeah. small, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, next okay, and I think there is one more. Yeah. Okay, so this is how it would look like one of our uh, test collections there in the dashboard. So, uh, as I commented some slides uh, before, uh, pretty easy to, to follow and to understand. So, uh, as you can see there, uh, there is the list of spec files. Uh, all of them went fine, except these two that uh, show up with an orange mark, uh, just because they didn't have any, any tests. But you get lots of information from there. And if you want to, to get more information, you also have on the right side the logs and uh, screenshots, videos, so that in our case, I mean, and now being much more familiarized with it, uh, it is a matter of few minutes uh, to discover when anything goes wrong uh, to to see the root cause of it. So that's uh, this is why we are on a, actually on a paid plan just to allow so several of our engineers to have access to it because uh, we actually didn't have enough with uh, one or two accounts. So we need at least that. Uh, one person in each of these squads uh, to have access to the dashboard to check it out and so that this also increases this uh, quality awareness in in all of the teams here and yeah for these end-to-end -end projects for now we have uh, more than i think there's 16 or 17 projects already there and yeah they triggered by the different bffs so uh, this is why it is so helpful to us because uh, we, we have quite some projects already so it's really nice to have everything centralized in, in one place uh, because otherwise it would have been uh, more difficult to follow uh, we can actually do it but uh, not as easy to, to follow in the end so yeah that's about the, the dashboard okay so yeah the resources for the for us, so this is our website, and actually, uh, we also left there the link of uh, one blog post that we published, published uh, I think, a couple of months ago, uh, which was actually the starting point of this uh, of this uh, webinar. So, actually, thank you to the Cypress team to for moving in and pushing all this through, and yeah, also for the information about Cypress and command to to install it. I will also make sure to include the link uh, to that uh, article that you wrote in the follow-up yeah. email to everyone. Okay. All right. So thank you, David. I am going to switch over to the QA uh, panel. And we've got a lot of questions. So let me go ahead and share that part of my screen in just a moment. we go all right so take it away okay so let's see do you have a standard process to add cypress identifiers in, in your ci, CI elements. elements ci data tags how do you deal with adding the tags yeah. to existing code okay so <laughs> nice question we do have this so yeah because uh, we're going to follow the proper patterns uh, we actually started out without having this, so we were just focusing on uh, class names or IDs, so that depending on what side of the application we were working on. And in the medium long term, that uh, it was like pretty obvious that we couldn't continue with uh, that approach because the tests like started to fail every now and then. So we started pushing a lot, uh, having these proper identifiers with uh, data CI. And actually, I think we we have called them like the data tests, but yes, we have like one proper attribute to to deal with, uh, yeah, to just for uh, getting the data in the in the tests. So yes, we we follow that that pattern. Okay, so next one, how do you handle your test structure? So I guess it's about. Uh, how do we, I mean, define these scenarios or how do we? So, 
Uh, actually, we have a process. So starting before the kickoff of every sprint in in the squads. So for every task and every new feature, we we define some acceptance criteria from which we define some scenarios. Uh, this is a relationship that can be one to one or one to n. And with that, uh, so we define all that uh, before starting with in the in the sprint. And then we just create these subtasks for, for them and we uh, decide on which end-to-end -end test collection uh, this well this new test has to has to be created. So yeah, I mean it's not uh, really easy because it was easier before uh, in the previous approach that we had. But now that we have specialized uh, up to this point, uh, this is a process that actually takes uh, some time. But uh, I mean, in the end, if you if you want to do things properly, you need to to do it like in the best way possible. So we spend a lot of time uh, defining the scenarios and deciding where to leave them and how to how to um, work with all of them together. Okay. okay. Are your QA engineers empowered to make changes to application code if necessary to make it more robust test? Identifiers and so on. Okay, one, sorry. Yeah, I think they are. We have a, like a, a local environment uh, quite easy to to work with. Um, actually, I think I reviewed uh, some PRs from, from David on time, over the time. So yeah, they, they're totally empowered as well as we as developers are empowered to, to work on the end-to-end -end test. Okay, so uh, next one from Alvaro Juste. Have you tried to integrate Cypress with Cucumber? So I'm actually glad that uh, you asked this because uh, yes, we have tried and we are actually pushing it a lot. So we started with it uh, with this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Cypress Cucumber pl uh, plugin. Uh, we started doing a proof concept some months ago, uh, just as like a new way of, well, a new step of ma making things like more easier to to scale and to yeah to enable more more people to use it and be more fast. So uh, we started yeah some months ago and we tried it in different test collections and actually we already decided that uh, we want to follow that that pattern. So in several collections we already have it and we find ourselves pretty uh, happy with uh, how it works and the easiness that it brings us to to work with it. So it's pretty. I mean, it's uh, possible that uh, we move all our tests. Uh, to a BDD approach. That's that's true. Okay. So, what is your recommendation for structuring test data to make it reusable and flexible? Are there any patterns for you to apply to design fixtures? So, recommendation for structuring test data. Mm. For creating mocks. Uh, yeah, not many. I mean, regarding the well, it is data. We have like different approaches, and actually it depends on what part of the of the application. But uh, yeah, in different applications, we have tried uh, from creating our own data or reusing available data, which is already there in our environments. So, for example, in the demo that uh, we have shown before. Uh, we were using an already existing uh, list in there. So we, what we just need to do is to be sure that we can use it. So this is why we just clean the occupancies and make it available to us. So actually, we, um, this is something that uh, we need to, to work on a little bit more because uh, we have like different approaches and we are like testing different paths and we didn't decide yet. Uh, the best uh, the best approach for for that. So we have actually used uh, quite some approaches, and we just need to to decide uh, uh, which one is the is the best in in our case. But uh, it's a nice question. Nice question. Okay. Uh, whoop. What kind of authorization and authentication flow do you use, and how? And 
<laughs> okay, they keep moving. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, okay, I'm going for the first one again. Uh, are you inside, inside press with visual testing regression? So, uh, not yet. Uh, actually, uh, we have a plan to test that out, but for now, we are not using it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to your one. What kind of authorization and authentication? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you run your tests in parallel? Okay, so. Actually, Cypress provides a pretty, pretty nice guide guidelines on how to enable parallelization. And actually, the most part of the work we have to we have to do it in our uh, brigade uh, event tool, uh, just to kind of uh, this communication flow uh, from Cypress to to brigade to tell brigade that uh, okay, now I, I need you to to raise more machines in order to enable uh, these tests uh, running in parallel. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, how we run it. It's a, a mixture between the configuration on the Cypress side and Brigade and enable them to, to communicate in order to, to enable yeah, this whole feature. So I'm not going to say that it was easy, but uh, because it took our time and it was a little bit uh, Painful in some aspects, but uh, once we got it in one of the repositories, then it was pretty easy to, to scale that to, to, re to re the rest of the uh, test collections. Okay, I think uh, so. The first and the second one are already answered. No, the one is not. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, so hello, I'd like to know if you use smokes to test all your functionalities or just some of the functions in particular. So many thanks. So uh, we actually don't use a lot of uh, mocks, so we have uh, set up just a few of them, but uh, we don't use them extensively. And I think just because we didn't find ourselves in that uh, uh, necessity yet, but uh, yes, actually, it's something that uh, we have in mind uh, also to to get deeper on that. But uh, plain question, uh, no, we don't use a lot of uh, mocks. OK, so I think the first three ones are ready. We have time for more uh, questions, right, uh, Steve? Uh, yeah, let's do one or two more questions, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay, so that first one is already, I think uh, it is already answered. Yeah. Okay, so what is a feature that you think Cypress should implement that might have helped you or what would be beneficial in general? Yeah, so for this, I have actually two in mind. So yeah, this uh, feature for uh, cross-browser testing, uh, this is something that we have been expecting for uh, some time. Uh, this is, was actually one of the uh, biggest uh, fears that we had when we started with it. Uh, and just because uh, lots of people get into our application using uh, many different kinds of uh, browsers. So uh, there was some fear there, but uh, we, even with that, we started using Cypress. And actually, with this combination that we have now uh, with the end to end test and then also exploratory testing, which is being done in different browsers and also uh, in from the mobile views and mobile app. So we feel pretty covered. And also combining that with all the metrics that we have, uh, for now, uh, it's not a, a problem, but uh, something that we would love to, to, to have. And we know that it will come. Uh, we don't know yet uh, when, but uh, something that uh, we are uh, expecting. And also, actually, another thing that I have in mind for this is uh, this thing about uh, retrying the tests. Uh, so I know that there is a plugin for that, but uh, it actually don't work pretty well in all the scenarios. So we tested it out uh, a while ago here, but uh, it was not uh, sufficient uh, as it is now. So it's something that we are expecting uh, just to improve our pipelines. And yeah, in case of we have noise in our pipelines and to be able to 
rerun the tests uh, in a more smart way. So these are like the two things that I would mention uh, we would like to, to have that they are not here yet. Got it. Thank you, David. Um, so why don't we do one last question and then we will wrap up today's webcast. Okay. So are you using it for API testing as well since it has the capabilities to do it? So uh, playing question is nope. So we have like a different framework for that. Uh, so we use uh, Bri uh, no, not Brigade, um, Gouge for that already in a BDD fashion. But uh, we do use uh, Cypress capabilities for uh, requesting to the APIs, but just as a way to prepare data or uh, checking things on the backend, but uh, we don't use it as our API, API test tool. Okay, thanks, David. Uh, so we're at the uh, top of the hour and we're going to wrap up the what today's webcast. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Spoto home team for sharing your insights and your experience utilizing Cypress. Uh, thanks uh, you know so much for sharing your uh, sharing that information with the community. Um, and for everyone that attended, thank you for attending. You will get an email, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, that will have a recording of today's webcast, as well as an opportunity to get one of our magic t-shirts. Uh, we'll also include the link to Spot of Home's article on their BFF approach. And uh, if there were, uh, I know that there were several other questions that showed up in our Q&A. Uh, we will follow up with you um, afterwards yeah. to, uh, to answer those yeah. questions. So uh, thank you everyone for joining and have a great day and look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right.